which is neat. That's pretty cool. And they took this corner out too. Same one. It's the same thing. And then this could be inverted. Now this is the inversion. It goes from point, the periphery, and back to point. And it goes towards you and me at the same time. This is karma. <laughs> so here is a organic one. It's going towards you at the center, but it's coming to me in the periphery. And then I can go to air and reverse it. And now the center is coming to me and the periphery is going towards you. So watch out what you, you know, give somebody a stink eye. Watch out. It's going to come back. Be careful. All right, these are symmetrical. This is a symmetrical inversion. And what I mean by that is that it's even. It's not odd like the seven. So what he did was he found out the form that was in here. There's a form you can't see. Huh? This is called sense-free thinking. We're working with everything we can't see. No, the stuff, I never saw any of this. The form that's inside here is this. This is, he called it an oloid. I made it out of paper. But uh, that's a beautiful form. And the guy, uh, he patented it in 1960. So it's been 50 years. And it's used to mix explosives. Because it's so smooth. It's also mixed, uh, it's put in um, water and it's spun off a solar panel. And it sets up waves that go across in ponds that are real stagnant and dead. Okay, and it enlivens these ponds. So it's being used all over. So um, I had to do an asymmetrical inversion. As you see, that that's not symmetrical. <coughs> So I had to find out what was inside the symmetrical, uh, asymmetrical form of seven. And this is what's inside this form. This is inside the seven-sided form. And uh, Angus has a big one of these. <laughs> so if you take this form and you invert it, it turns into this. Now, what's interesting about this is that these are different curves, you know, and you have to look at the comparison between a symmetrical and an asymmetrical form. This is basic beat. This is rhythm. Because the waves that this would create would be different heights and different distances apart. Okay, this is too mechanical. So this new form, okay, uh, can be used in the same way. But I found other uses too. Okay, so just to, to make sure you understand about the, the tetrahedron, uh, I tried to put it in relationship to cell division. So here's the single cell. And then the single cell divides. Okay, then it divides again, doesn't it? And it makes four, right? Okay, this is unstable. So what the cell does, okay, when this happens, is it turns and sits. What do you think that is? That's a tetrahedron. Look. Now what happens again is this divides again. I found this out. That when this divides again from four to eight, it turns into this. And what is this? This is the cube. Know how this goes inside? This is a warmth form. The seventh side is warmth, but it has air. Okay, so that was important to me on, on finding that out because I want to know where it is. And a lot of people ask me, well, where's the first cube? Who made the first cube? You know, and I found out. I found the first cube and who made it? Well, I'm not sure exactly who made it, but here it is. That's pyrite. Is that amazing? That's a perfect cube. And then, the, of course, the last form I didn't tell, ta tell you about is the dodecahedron. And here's the dodecahedron. This was not cut by anybody. Isn't that amazing? These weren't cut. These are platonic forms. All right, well, here we go. Let me move right along here. Um, 
All I have to do is find that little um, remote that I had. Uh, in the case of emergencies, I just push the button. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm getting closer to where I wanted to be. I think I, I, th I think it's. Uh, I think it's disappeared through there. Mm, I thought it, here I got it. See, it's, this is right where it's supposed to be. Okay, rotation in the cube. I've shown you this before, so here it is again. Okay, this shows you rotation in a cube. Okay, and now here, um, I put them all together. So it's going from uh, a tetrahedron to a tetrahedron. In the middle is an octahedron, and there's a seven here and a seven here. Now here are my other studies. Okay. Um, here are my other studies. This shows you where the tetrahedrons are in the middle octahedron and the seven. I also found out that I could put a form around the seven-sided form, which turns into a 13. A whole other new form. It's based on 13 now. And I could also put the 13 side inside the seven. Okay. And I went to the Gerthianum, I, um, and this, the head of the mathematical association said to me, if I could find what went around the seven, it would help the heart at night. When we leave and excarnate, the heart is reconstructed during the daytime or during the night, and that would be the form that would go around it. So I have two doctors that, are, that have this 13-sided this form. Okay, so here we go with this again. This is root three. And in root three, in this vesica, they always put formative people. So this, this is really important, this vesica. It's used through history. This is the Renaissance. Okay, so why that's so important is because root three is the diagonal across the cube, which I showed you before. Now, my first indication was this, to find out what this is. All Okay, if you look at the face of this cube, it's 45 degrees. It goes from corner to corner. Can you see that? And if I look at the top, it's 45 degrees. Now, if I look at the side, it's 45 degrees. But that's not 45 degrees. It's root 3. Now, this is a hard concept, but it's not as bad as you think. Okay, so what I found out is... If I project, this is projective geometry, if I project from a cube, a face, here's the face, here it is. But this is going from this corner, but it's not going up there, it's going way back to there. But from the front, it looks 45. Now, this is important because that's why I did this. I'm trying to get it more and more clear. This is 45, this is 45, that's 45, they all are. But this is root 3, which is 36. What you look into a face, 36 degrees, is 45. Now, I know that comes kind of confusing, but this is why I did it. Because when I started to research the heart, I found out that all the doctors say that the front view, the top view, and the side view is the heart sits in our body at 45 degrees. Now you know that's not true, huh? It doesn't sit at 45 degrees. Well, they're not geometrists. So I took these x-rays and I put them in a cube. So here's the, the, the top of the heart, okay, which is like this. So I was like this. Here's the front of the heart. And here's the side of the heart. So according to this, this there is a cube in the construction of, this, of the testahedron which sits in our body at 36 degrees, root 3. That's why the heart is on this side of the body. No one, know, no one knows why the heart is on the left side. The closest anybody came to was some kind of guess. They said because this part of the body is colder than this side. Okay, so if I take this out, that's root 3. It's not 45 degrees. It's 36. But when you look at the front view, it looks like... 45. So we give them a little credit. So here's the, the same thing that I just showed you, the, that this is 36 degrees. 
on in another angle. Now, if you put the cube in the skeleton, okay, here's what the book shows. See how the heart is on this side right here? That's because this part of the apex of the seven-sided form is on this side, and yet the cube is in exactly in the middle of the body. Okay, so to show you where that is, another view, and it shows you the where the cube is and where the chestahedron is. Okay, now here's the, the angle of 45 degrees. They're correct, but it's from the front. Okay, and of course the chestahedron fits in a cube, but at root three. Now I came across this particular uh, bronze casting of a crucifixion scene of Christ and uh, it's from the 7th century from Spain. And when I saw that I was shocked because I realized that there's a cube in Christ. There it is. It's sitting exactly like I showed you. It's sitting exactly in the middle like this. Okay, well, you know, how, what's, what's going on? So, if I take my form, okay, like this, and I spin it, you know that it turns into a bell, and those are the black lines. I knew that this was a vortex. I knew this was a geometry of a vortex. It had to be. So, I made a vortex generator. Um, and so, I, I'm going to show you the vortex generator I made. <coughs> Maybe. Wow. Ah, there it is. Oh, no, no, I have it next time. Here, I, the computer is probably just getting a little tired. There it is. I made that vortex generator to do that. Okay, and the reason I did that is because I, could, I was trying to uh, put this bell shape into the vortex generator. Here it is, the one that's in the photograph. This is accurate. And of course, this circle right here is the circle that's created when it spins. What I wanted to do was to put this in, uh, I'll show you another picture. So I put it into the vortex because I was trying to find out what is, how this relates to a vortex. And I found out that this part of the vortex here is accelerating. But this part of the bell is deaccelerating. And it's right in the middle between here and here is the balance. So this form is slowing down and speeding up at the same time. This is the polarity. This is the balance, okay, between the male and female, between all kinds of polarities that you choose. So based, if this is the heart, the heart is trying to balance, okay, for us, the red and blue blood, which is the peripheral in the center, which is any polarity. Well, uh, so I show it again in the skeleton, okay, again here that it's on that side. And of course, I told you about the cube, which is, you've seen already. So what I want to do is to put this into the vortex generator because I realize that the heart are two vortexes. Our heart is two vortexes. If you bring one vortex together with another vortex, they cancel each other out, they're gone. <laughs> So what I did was make one solid, put it in at 36 degrees, because I knew that's the angle it had to be, and what happened is it pushed the other vortex to the side. So this one here is flowing, it's pushed off to the side. Uh, I'll see another picture of it. And it also creates these two vortexes, which are really interesting, that this is what's happening with this form only at 36 degrees. All right, so here we go. Uh, what I did was I took some more photographs of this. Um, and what I found was that this pushed off vortex here looked like this. So I took this form and I took um, waterproof epoxy and I filled this up and so this wasn't here anymore. Okay, so let me show you this other picture. It shows you the shape of that form that I'm filling up and also shows you from the top view what this form looks like. Right here.